Hey, welcome to Arts Focus. I'm Elise Buckeye, Program Specialist with the Columbia Office of Cultural Affairs. And right now in the studio, I have Meg Phillips Crespi, who's the Artistic Director of Girl Rilla Theater. Welcome, Meg. It's nice to be here. Uh, so, Girl Rilla, you've been around for a while, but Girl Rilla is new. It is. It's, um, it's a theater series that's mm -hmm. going on in 2019. We've got six performances that are happening bi-monthly. Uh, we've had four of them already. We've got two left. Um, we've got one coming up in September and then another in November. So what made you, you've been involved in the Mid-Missouri theater scene, you've done plays, you've, you've written plays, you've acted, right? In all, I have, of, in all of the ways. Yes, yes. Uh, what made you want to step out there and start this, uh, this series? Um, you know, I've been involved in theater since I was 10, which is a long time ago now. I just had my 30th high school reunion this past weekend. Um, and as long as I've been involved, it's always been the case that at every audition, there are, you know, 18 women trying out for one or two parts, and there's two men trying out for 18 male parts. And that's always frustrated me because not only are there not enough parts for women, I mean, there's just women who are languishing talent that is not getting used because there's just not the opportunity. Um, and as I've gone through my theater career, I've tried to become a little bit more of an activist in terms of being um, a feminist and just trying to promote people who don't get the opportunities that they should. Um, and so I had this idea about a year ago uh, that I wanted to have a theater series where women played all the parts. So every gender is played by a woman. So has that affected how you've picked which shows? Or do you pick shows based on, you know, the artistic direction you want to go in and not consider the characters um, as they're written? Um, yeah, I didn't consider the characters so much. Um, I just tried to come up with a season that I thought would be entertaining for the audience, but also that it would be fun for women to play some of these really great roles because men generally, not only do they have more roles, but they tend to be more interesting roles and better written and more complicated and involved. Yeah, the soliloquies you remember, even just from Shakespeare, which a lot of people have had exposure to just through schooling, those are all male soliloquies. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Men are allowed to be complicated, uh, complex characters, and women tend to be more one-dimensional. So how has it gone so far? What shows have you done? Uh, we started with Lysistrata, um, which if you don't know what that's about, uh, the women of ancient Greece are tired of all the fighting, so they decide to go on a, a strike until the fighting stops. None of the men get sex. So uh, by the time the show's over, you have all these men, you know, kind of doubled over in pain with their Spartan walking sticks, is what they call them. Um, so that was really, that went down very well. Um, and it was hilarious to watch, you know, ladies with, um, their phalluses, you know, doing their thing. <laughs> I will say I, I had to read it aloud, uh, a pretty uh, body character when I was 18, oh, and it was pretty oh, eye-opening. Yeah, when you were 18, that would be a little hard, I think, so yeah. So good for you, good for you. <laughs> so what else have you guys um, done? We did Taming of the Shrew, um, and then we did a couple of one acts. There's uh, Susan Glassbull is a playwright that was working in the early 1900s and she wrote one called Trifles that has been called the perfect one act and it's a, um, a murder mystery and it, it's so well done that Alfred Hitchcock actually uh, adapted it for, um, uh, let's see, I think it was a Twilight Zone episode. Um, it was called A Jury of Her Peers. Um, so anyway, we did that one, and then um, the only one I did, the only play I did that was not in the public domain um, was in conjunction with Trifles. Uh, there's a, a playwright, uh, another woman playwright, Claudia Barnett, who wrote, it's called He Killed My Bird, which was basically a, an examination of what happens when we fictionalize murderesses. And so uh, it kind of dealt with the mystery from Trifles. Uh, and Interesting. And some other, like uh, sh the Chicago, you know, what happened to the people that, it, the murderesses that it was based on, et cetera. Um, and then the last one we did was, oh gosh, I'm blanking out on it. We just did Othello? it. Othello? Othello is coming up, actually. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> So let's move to that. Well, people she can stoops, go see. She stoops to conquer. There it is. <laughs> a, a British comedy about a, um, mistaken identities and a jewel heist gone wrong and that was really fun too. So you've had four? We've uh, had four. Four and, and then left. you got two more. Mm -hmm. Which, what are those two? So Othello's coming up in September and then the November slot is actually still a little open. Um, when I was putting together the season I just 
I couldn't come up with a, a sixth one that I really loved, and so I decided that I would write one, uh, which seemed like a really good idea last year. <laughs> but as the time draws near, I'm I'm rethinking that. So keep your eyes open. And All right. That so it's a mystery surprise. Mystery surprise. At the end. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to really ask you, as you you guys are focusing on having a diverse all female cast, yes. um, how it has kind of changed. Uh, your look at the text, you know, something like Othello, um, you know, how a lesbian love story then, a lesbian love triangle, um, looks different than uh, how the original text is. That's actually interesting because I'm getting ready to adapt Othello for Girl Rilla, and I'm debating, do I keep Iago as a male character or do I make Iago female? Um, and so I haven't so do, decided are the, yet. Are, is it is there some so the the genders presented are sometimes presented male played played by female. Yes, yes. Okay. So we're not we're not changing the genders to female. We're just having female actors portraying the men. Gotcha. Yeah. My mistake on that. No, no, that's all right. Um, so it's yeah. still up in the air though whether what that relationship yeah, will look I, like. Yeah, I am waiting till till I'm dived in and kind of seeing what the dynamics are between Othello and Iago, because I'm leaning towards making Iago a woman, but, mm -hmm. but we'll see. All right, wonderful. Um, so just in general, like your take on um, these roles, what else can we be doing in our theater scene and in our art scene to be promoting women and diverse um, diverse representation in uh, these positions out on the stage? Well, an easy thing to do is color conscious casting. Um, a lot of people might have heard color blind casting, so color conscious just takes it a step further, saying not that you can put um, a person of color into any role or you know a person of any color into any role um, so you can put people into different roles just keeping in mind that you know you might not want to put for example a black actor in the only bad guy role you know because that might um, reinforce, reinf biases. reinforce some biases yeah but um, but if but people can do color conscious casting that's a really easy way to help increase diversity um, I have also, one reason that I started this theater series was because there has been a lot of, you know, conversation of, well, let's just cast gender blind and lots of conversation, but I just don't see it happen very often. And so I wanted to put these shows up on their feet and say, look, this, this works pretty well. Right. And it does, you know, um, the actors for the first couple minutes, you're like, that's a woman. And then really quickly you forget that it's a woman playing a man and it's just a character and so I I hope that people that directors can see that and consider doing some gender blind casting absolutely so you guys um, run out of talking horse is where you put on your shows that's correct um, and then you're sponsored by Mizzou diversity yes. inclusion office yes that's correct. do you know yet if there's gonna be a next series uh, I I think that the, uh, the series will go on in some fashion. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that's going to look like yet. I'm actually meeting with um, a co-conspirator next week to try to talk about what, ne what our next steps are. Um, but the, we only had um, a very generous donation for 2019. Right. Um, so because of that, the uh, admission has been free and will be free for the entire year. Oh, wonderful. Um, so our free admission would have to end. But, right. Um, but I think people would be happy to you know, well, they still have two more awesome opportunities yes. to come, um, and you guys are Girl Rilla. Girl Rilla Theater. Yes. Um, and we'll put we'll put the website here. Yeah, it's a little hard to find because it's you know it's hard to spell. So well, you guys are sneaking in and showing uh, showing a whole new view of what theater can look like and how people can perform. So it makes sense. The title <laughs> makes sense. All Thanks. right. Well, thank you so much for coming, and good luck on your next oh, couple sure. shows. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us on this episode of Arts Focus.